Hey, Matt. Hi, Don. Uh, good to talk to you guys again. Thanks for taking my call. But uh, I'm looking at the time now, and I'm, I'm thinking that I might not have enough time to actually dig into what I want to discuss. So uh, I guess I'll just, uh, I might just call back in a week. Okay. Sorry, okay. Sorry that that didn't, didn't work out today. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Sure. Bye. And as a reminder, Phil and Don will be on next week. Not the Everly Brothers, but... Phil Session and Don Baker will be on uh, next week, so you can call in and talk to them. We've got Daniel in Wisconsin. Thanks for waiting. It says here you, you believe claiming there's no God is an extraordinary claim since God is such a common belief, right? Well, I don't know if it's so common, but I believe it's more common than the opposite. Yeah, that. so there's a fallacy called argumentum ad populum, which is an appeal to popularity which is this notion that uh, something is true or likely true because so many people believe it to be the case. However, but I would agree with you that it's extraordinary. But, but I, would agree with, I would agree with you that it would be extraordinary to claim there is no God. Okay, because wasn't that what Don Baker had just previously said within the past hour? I've kind of lost track of time at this point, but... Oh, I might, I might have. Um... Yeah, I believe you told the caller that it's an extraordinary claim uh, to say there's a God. Yeah, there's it's an extraordinary, it is an extraordinary claim to claim that there's a God. Okay, but then the opposite must be true as well, correct? This well, I've, ar God. I've already acknowledged that, so that asserting that there is no God may in fact also be an extraordinary claim. More, more important than whether or not it's extraordinary is it's an unfalsifiable claim. And so the position that I hold is not necessarily there is no God, although I think there are gods that we can show don't exist. It's no one has prevented... Sorry, you said there's, there's gods that you can what? That we could show don't exist because they lead to logical contradictions or contradictions with what we observe in reality. Agreed. Okay. But the, my position is if somebody claims there is a God and, well, in the entire history of the human species. I am unfamiliar with any God that has been supported by sufficient evidence to warrant belief. I'm not claiming necessarily that it doesn't exist. I'm saying I don't have good reason to believe it does. Right. I've heard a lot of your podcasts, but um, I believe there's plenty of evidence to point to there being one God, especially since there's so many cultures that believe in many gods. I well, there have been many cultures. So the number of people who believe something has no impact on whether or not it's true. Agreed, but it does point to probability. No, it doesn't. It points to what humans believe. At one point, a great many people believed that the earth, uh, that the sun orbited the earth or that the earth was flat or any number of things that were false, that, that lightning came from Zeus, etc. But no matter how many people believed it, it had no impact on whether or not those claims were true. And it doesn't impact the probability either because people aren't perfect thinkers. And so if everybody is convinced for, about something, everybody on the planet is convinced of something, and they're all ba doing it based on flawed information and flawed reasoning, then you still haven't done anything to address what the probability of the claim is. The, the most likely source of a religion is, your, is from your parents. And that's cultural transmission is really what that is. And so... If, if you think that religion is culture and it's transmitted from parents to children, then of course a lot of people believe and a lot of people believe the, the same religions as their parents. And, and as Matt says, it doesn't mean it's true. It, it just means that people are acculturated to it. Okay, a couple things there. Um, first of all, I was getting to the probability that there could even sustain life on this planet and the probability that we could even... 100%. Have especially this many... It's a hundred percent probability that this could be happening right now. There's life on this planet, right? So the probability that this this planet can sustain right. life is one. But the probability that it came just by chance is borderline next to nothing. It's not borderline next to nothing, but no matter how unlikely it is, it happened. Now the question then becomes: What is the explanation for why this planet can sustain life? Now. We know that it's possible within the laws of physics, within natural law. What's the probability that a god did it? And how did you calculate that? Well, I went by the reverse of the probability that it wasn't a god. 
Okay, so all you're doing there is just asserting just completely all, happened all you're doing there is just asserting that it's more probable that a God did it. I'm asking you, how do you determine that it's more probable that a God did it? Um, well, you also look at the conscience and our moral behavior and the fact that we're prone to love. You know, there's all of those things are complete. All of those things are completely irrelevant as to whether or not a planet can sustain life. Agreed. See, let's say let's say I dealt out a hand of cards, and you pick up your hand and you have a royal straight flush. Right. Did I cheat? Uh, the probability that you cheated is very high. Okay. How did you conclude that? Um, just based on statistical evidence. Yeah. The problem here is that. Is it possible for someone to get that hand without anyone cheating? Absolutely. How did you determine that it's more probable that I cheated than that I didn't? Now, you can't just go by the odds of the hand. You're now making a claim that I cheated. So how did you determine that it's more probable than not that I cheated? How did I determine? Um, do I know you in advance? Sure. And not only do you know me, but you know that I'm really good with cards and I'm a magician and that it was possible for me to deal you a royal straight flush. How did you determine that it's more probable that I cheated than that I didn't? And this was on the first hand? Yeah. You're digging around for all kinds of stuff. I've granted you 10 times more than anybody should to make the point that you cannot reach a reasonable conclusion based on the information that it's more probable than not that I cheated because you cannot rule out the fact that I didn't cheat. And as long as that remains a possibility, you can say, I suspect you cheated. You're free to do that. But you cannot reasonably conclude that it's more likely than not that I cheated until you have additional information. Fair enough. Same for God. Until you demonstrate, until you demonstrate how likely a God is, how, how likely a, or how probable a God is as an explanation. And, and the big mistake people make is a God is entirely consistent with everything. Hey, God right. can serve as an explanation or an answer for anything. It serves as an explanation for nothing because it doesn't tell you anything about how. And so if, if somebody says, hey, I prayed and because uh, I was feeling down and I feel better, you can't tell whether or not a God intervened. There is no mechanism by which we can evaluate supernatural intervention at all. And until, until there's such a mechanism where we can demonstrate it, you don't get to appeal to it as a possible or plausible explanation. It's just something that's unfalsifiable that we can't rule out. But when you look at it and you say, oh, it's really unlikely that this planet could have happened by natural means, no matter how unlikely it is, you have to be able to demonstrate that God is more likely even to make the claim that it probably was God. And even if you could make the claim that it was probably God, you still haven't concluded that it's reasonable to conclude that it is God. Because let's say we knew that, let's say exactly half the time I deal fairly and the other half of the time I cheat. Okay. Let's say we know that that's the case, which is not something we don't know about a God. If I deal you a good hand, you still don't know which of the 50% you're in. And if you were to conclude that I likely cheated, you are factually incorrect because we've already defined it at 50-50. But if, right. you are, if you think that that's the case, that's what you think about it. And what you think about it has no bearing on whether or not it's actually true. And so when you tell somebody, I'm convinced that Matt cheated, and you get a whole bunch of other people who are also convinced that you cheated, that doesn't make you any well, more right. Between being convinced and, being, and believing something's probable, like saying there's a good chance and being... And okay, that I'm convinced there's, but but we're we're at fifty fifty, right? Yeah, and this is with you knowing a bunch of information. Not only can you not get to fifty fifty with a god, you can't even put a number on it 
It's unquantifiable. And that's not the fault of me or skeptics or reason or mathematics. It's, it's the fault of the claim itself. And so if there is a God, this God has arranged things such that you can never reasonably conclude it exists. Well, I believe that's where we have to go to the Bible. And I know you don't think that's sufficient evidence. But you, you are yeah, correct. And, 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 and actually, the, the, second, the second the words we have to go to the Bible came out, you just demonstrated your bias. Because why didn't we go to the Quran? Well, I believe it was Don talking who said that we get our beliefs from our parents more often than not, correct? Yeah, my parents got me to believe all kinds of things that aren't true. But how does that come into play when you were abused by your parents and you believe that they were false prophets and believe anyway? I, I don't understand <laughs> what you're asking. I didn't quite follow that. Because doesn't that at least imply that you must like and respect your parents? Doesn't what yeah, imply? You, you know, one of the commandments is to honor your mother and father, but... You're, you're going back to the Bible, so you, so you completely derailed from the question I asked. But I don't know what you're on about now. I'm sorry? I, I don't know what your point is now, because I asked why you went to the Bible and said the Quran, and now you're saying something about what if you believed your parents were prophets or whatever. Um, yeah, That you, was just a point to... Uh, um, you know, saying that I must get my beliefs from my parents. No, Don, Don said the most that's likely... That's why I'm looking to the Bible over the Quran. Sure. My but I didn't say anything about Christians. you. When, I, I was just I, saying it was common. When I ask why go to the Bible instead of the Quran, simply saying because that's the religion my parents indoctrinated me into, uh, that, that's a, probably an accurate response, but do you think it's a reasonable re reason to go to the Bible? No. Okay. That was the point of my question. I, I went to the Bible because I was an atheist for years after um, problems with my parents and uh, then became a Christian because of a supernatural encounter. But obviously I have no way of proving that. Yeah. Um, How, the, the thing I is... The, but I would definitely not choose the Quran because the Quran's been debunked over and over again, especially... So it's the Bible. To ...kill all Christians <laughs> and Muhammad being proven to be a pedophile of sorts and whatnot. Um... And God of the Bible is a mass Bible murderer if, if, if the stories are true, <laughs> which is worse. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I don't I, believe th there's a reason I'm not interrupting, in because the longer you go on about how the Quran's been debunked, but the Bible hasn't, the more ridiculous you sound. So keep going. Well, there's not really a mass murder in the Bible. Other than, you know, God and Moses and... Okay. But how is that genocide? When God commands Moses to kill all the Midianites but keep the young virgins for himself, you don't think that counts as genocide just because we, we kept the booty for ourselves? Uh, we didn't kill them all, so it's not genocide? What, well, what about the, the Amalekites who were, who were to be wiped from the earth in all memory and then we wrote it down so that we couldn't forget after saying we... Yeah. I, I think that you don't actually know your Bible. Oh, I know it very well. See, you're implying that these were humans, that these were natural humans that were killed, right? And I, and I know I'm being laughed at, but I'm sure you're familiar with the verse that says the sons of God came down and had intercourse with the, with the daughters of man and thus created the heroes of old, which many theologians and scholars believe were probably giants. And, you know, one of the reasons that in Native American culture, they raised their hand and whatever, it's to make sure that you only have five fingers on your hand and not six. I got one I finger. Reason that <laughs> you have one finger? Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, thanks for dehumanizing yeah, everybody as a matter of convenience, but when we're talking about killing off, you know, the various other tribes and stuff, uh, yeah, you can claim that they were the demon-spawned giants of the world, but Game of Thrones is over and so is this call. <laughs>